Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different's World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, manifest, plan and prepare for it because I guarantee you guys it's really coming to you all for sure. And if this is your first, second or third time to my YouTube channel, welcome, happy to have you guys or welcome back. Before you leave, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come and learn about your girl and what's going on in my world. And speaking of coming and learning about your girl, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products in which educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. So again, first, second, or third time, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? And so today we got a hot one for you guys. It's Monday, so you guys know on Monday we drop our motivational content. And so this one's no different. Uh, this one actually is going to be titled Reprogramming Your Mind or uh, um, Rebuilding Your Mind or Changing It from a Negative to a Positive. However you want to look at it, we, we digging into that topic today. Uh, for those out there, you know, that, that have gone through it, including myself, I guess I'm going to have to use myself as an example. Um from an environment that I came up from was a very chaotic one and for me chaos was normal and it wasn't until I got into something totally different you know and then seeing a different lifestyle and what was possible for me I started to reprogram in my mind and thinking that hey I'm worthy I deserve to have good things come into my life I, I'm gonna go get up and go get it and so that came all from changing my perceptive of how I felt or thought my life should be or where it was going to go um, for those that, that may know about my background, uh, and if not, here it is. Uh, around the age of 11, ended up homeless for three years, living from pillow to post. And at the age 14, was secretly placed in foster care. Uh, and throughout my childhood, um, like I said, growing up in a chaotic environment, it was normal for me. And so when I got into foster care, I was actually placed in nice and decent foster homes with big houses. Uh, all my foster parents were college ed educated and they were black. And so I'd never seen, you know, black educated uh, uh, homeowners before. And so uh, just living in that environment for four years, that helped uh, with the transition of program, reprogramming my mind. It, it didn't happen overnight. And I'm still working on, you know, some of the keys. You know, I'm, I'm a constant work in progress. Uh, and so and that's how it will be for the rest of my life and for you guys as well for those that are changing from that negative mindset to a positive mindset it's not going to be an overnight thing it's going to be a constant and consistent battle of the mind uh, those that are in their spiritual walk when Satan is on you or the devil is on you he will try to ruin what you have good coming to you especially this is how you know when you have good things coming your way all evil will come against you and try to stop you that's how you know that you are at your breaking point and it's time for you to shine so go through it strive through it and come out at the end like a boss like you should um what i want to do with this is i want to share a video with you guys and then come back on and talk a little bit more about the subject because i think like i said when it comes to motivating you guys you need to hear it from more than one person and so i found this dope video from dr joe dispenza talking about how to learn how to reprogram your mind from a negative to a positive or one that's in a, a perpetual state that doesn't uh, give you the maximum results. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in a negative mindset to you know, not do anything or not prosper. It's just sometimes people have that lazy attitude or oh well, they, they're very complacent, if you will. And so, with that being said, check out this dope video I found, and once we come back on, we'll talk a little bit more about reprogramming your mind, as well as more of what's going on in different world. Yeah, here it is, check it out. How many people actually believe in the idea that the way you think has some effect on your life? So how many people actually woke up this morning and consciously created a future? You know, the biggest reason why people don't do it is because you don't really believe it's true. You see, if you knew on a gut level that it was absolutely true, would you ever miss a day? And would you ever let any thought slip by your awareness that you didn't want to experience? So your brain, according to neuroscience, is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of your environment. It's a record, an artifact of your past. So if you believe this then, then does your environment control your thinking or does your thinking control your environment? 
So if you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed on the same exact side as you did the day before, you shut the alarm clock off with the same finger, you slip into your favorite slippers, you shuffle into the bathroom and you use the toilet like you always do, then you walk over to the mirror and you look at yourself to remember who you are, then you get into the shower and you wash yourself in the same routine way, then you groom yourself to look like everybody expects you to look, then you go downstairs and you drink coffee out of your favorite mug. Then you drive to work the same way as you did the day before. You see the same people that push the same emotional buttons. You do the exact thing that you know how to do and you memorize and can do so well that you're an expert at. Then you hurry up and rush home so you can hurry up and check your emails, so you could hurry up and go to bed, so you can hurry up and do it all over again. Now, here's my question. Did your brain change at all that day? We could say that you were thinking the same thoughts, performing the same actions, that create the same experiences, that produce the same emotions, but secretly expecting something to change in your life. So then, as the environment turns on different circuits in your brain, you begin to think equal to your environment. As you see the same people and go to the same places and do the same things at the same time, it's the external environment that's turning on different circuits in your brain, causing you to think equal to everything that you know. And as long as you think equal to everything that's familiar or known to you, what do you keep creating more of? Same life. Now, the quantum law is still applying to you. You're just thinking equal to everything that you know, and you keep creating more of the same. To change, to truly change is to think greater than your environment. And every great person in history knew this, whether it was William Wallace or Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King or Queen Elizabeth I or Joan of Arc, they all had a vision. They all had an idea, couldn't see it, couldn't smell it, couldn't taste it, couldn't feel it, but it was alive in their mind. It was so alive in their mind that they began to live as if that reality was actually happening now. So can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already happened? Neuroscience says it's absolutely possible. Now, your personality, your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. It's that simple. And your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. So the present personality who's sitting here today, you, has created the present personal reality called your life. Would you agree? Would you also agree then if you wanted to create a new personal reality that on a fundamental level you would have to change the thoughts that you are thinking, the behaviors and habits that you're demonstrating, and the emotions that you've memorized that's become part of your identity? And most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it never works. We have to become somebody else. So then, as you keep thinking the same thoughts, performing the same actions, and living by the same experiences that produce the same emotions, there's a principle in neuroscience that says nerve cells that fire together wire together. And if you keep repeating the same states of mind and body over and over again, your brain begins to fire in the same sequences, in the same patterns, and same combinations. And whenever you make your brain work in a certain way, that's called mind. Mind is the brain in action. So as you remind yourself every day who you think you are, you're causing your brain to fire in the exact same ways. And as they fire and wire in the same patterns over time, the brain moves into a very finite signature, and that's called your personality. Now that box in your brain isn't literally a box, but it's the most commonly wired, neurologically fired, programs that run redundantly because we keep doing the same things over and over again. To change your mind, then, is to make the brain work in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations, to begin to make the brain work differently. And the one ingredient that allows us to do that is knowledge or information, because every time you learn something new, you make a new connection in your brain. That's what learning is. Learning is forging new connections. 
Remembering is maintaining or sustaining those connections. So now, every time you have a thought, you make a chemical. And if you have a great thought or an unlimited thought or a joyful thought, you turn on a set of circuits in your brain that fires in a very specific sequence, pattern, and combination that produces a level of mind that turns on another part of the brain that makes a chemical for you to begin to feel exactly the way you were just thinking, great or unlimited or joyful. Now, if you have a negative thought or an unhappy thought or a self-depreciating thought, you turn on a different set of circuits and a different combination, a different sequence and a different pattern that produces a different level of mind. And the brain then begins to make a different batch of chemicals that signals the body for you to begin to feel exactly the way you were just thinking, negative or unhappy or unworthy. So the moment you begin to feel the way you think because the brain is in constant communication with your body, you begin to think the way you feel, which makes more chemicals for you to feel the way you think, and then you think the way you feel, and then you feel the way you think, and then you think the way you feel. And some people do this for 20 or 30 or 40 years. Now, the redundancy of that cycle over time creates what I call a state of being. And a state of being is when your mind and body are working together, or your thoughts and feelings are aligned to a concept. So thoughts are the language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body. And as people get caught in this cycle of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking, over time, they condition their body to memorize that emotion as well as the conscious mind. And whenever the body knows as well as the mind, that's called a habit. A habit is when your body is the mind. Now, 95% of who you are by the time you're 35 years old is a set of memorized behaviors set of emotional reactions, beliefs, perceptions, attitudes that run just like a computer program. So 5% of your conscious mind begins to work against 95% of what you've memorized. So the person wants to think positively, but they're feeling negatively. They want to create their dream board, you know, and put up their future life, but they feel unworthy. That's mind and body in opposition. We have to recondition the body to a new mind. So how many people know someone who's memorized suffering? And you say to that person, hey, did you read the book I gave you? What do they say? No. Hey, listen, we're going to go out to dinner. We're going to go see some stand-up comedy. We're going to go for a walk along the water. You want to come? No. What do they say? I'm insisting on this neurochemical order that no person, no thing, no experience can move us from it. And we have these three brains to allow us to move into a new state of being. And the quantum field, universal mind, whatever you want to call it, responds to who you're being. Not what you're thinking, not what you're feeling, but the combination of how you're thinking and how you're feeling called a state of being. Now, most people wait for what? Crisis or trauma or disease or loss or... or uh, diagnosis to really want to change. They wait to the point where the ego is brought to such a low level that they cannot go on business as usual any longer. That's when we begin to look at how we're thinking or what we believe or how we act or our attitude or what emotions we're living by. And my message is why wait? We can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering, which tends to be the human model, or we can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that dope video from Dr. Joe Dispenser. I dropped his information below in the content, or excuse me, the description, so be sure to check out his videos and show him some love after you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, of course. But yeah, as you guys listened in and watched in on that, um, that informative video, what he was talking about in regards to how to reprogram your subconscious uh, and, and how it works and manifests into physical uh, uh, things in our lives, it, it comes from, you know, the thought, and as he talked about personality, your thought is, your personality is stem from your thoughts and how you carry yourself and what you think about things and, and how you feel about it. 
And so if you always thinking that nothing's good is gonna come your way or you know, you're not meant for greatness or whatever you, 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 you're dealing with in your life, it's just the way it is. Just remember, that's a mindset. You don't have to stay in that mindset. You can change all that, even if it's not a positive. Here's how I look at it. When it comes to, you know, speaking things into your life and reprogramming your mind, it's, it's it relies in the tongue. It starts in your mind, but then it goes to the tongue. It's the power in the tongue. That's what I say. So when you're speaking things into your life, even if it's, if it's good or bad, it's going to come to you. And so... If you thinking you waking up first thing in the morning, you, you mad and upset because you got to go to work. Oh, this is going to be a bad day. Oh, I'm going to be dealing with some BS as soon as I get into it. Then you've already decided and called it upon yourself and spoken it into existence that you're going to have a bad day and it's not going to go the way you planned. However, if you wake up with a positive mindset, try you guys. I challenge you guys. 21 day challenge just to wake up every day with a positive mindset and see where it gets you. And if you wake up with that positive mindset and, you know, just having hope in your heart that, you know, it may or may not be a good or bad day, but at least you're going to keep that positive attitude of, hey, whatever comes my way, I'm going to handle it like a boss and I'm going to get through it. It's going to be all right. And so I often tell people, like I said, it's power in the tongue. And if you can't, you know, speak words of beauty and positivity over your life, then tame your tongue. If you can't be positive, don't be negative. Be quiet. And even in such and being real about your situation, what you're going through, you can say it. You can be real about it. Just don't be negative. You know, say, hey, I'm having a real shitty day. It's, it's, it's effed up for me right now, but it's going to get better. God going to get me through it because I'm a boss and that's what bosses do. And so... Again, if you if you either be positive, be real, or be quiet when it comes to speaking things into your life, uh, like I said, the power of manifestation for me is real. I have witnessed it. I've tasted it and seen both good and bad. That's what actually pushed me to start changing from a negative mindset. When I manifested the worst nightmare out of thin air, I thought of it and couldn't stop thinking of it, and then eventually it happened. And so I realized, wow. If I have the power, just the, the power of thinking something negative, imagine what I can do when I'm thinking something positive. And so, like I said, when it comes to me and mine, I'm, I'm on that come up like Cardi B and some maybe on that come back like Robert D. Either or, but whatever way it goes, I'm going to speak words of beauty into my life. You know, I'm not living that lifestyle of the rich and famous just yet, but it's coming for me. I know it. I feel it. I believe it. And I receive it. That's why I'm manifesting, planning, and preparing for it. So anybody out there, you guys, that's going through it and, and just have to dig deep within yourself and your heart and your mind and, and reprogram it. If you're looking at life in a negative way, even if, if times it's, it might be true of what you're saying, doesn't mean you have to feed into it. It doesn't last long. And so... Start reprogramming your mind, and then that's when you move to getting it out on paper. That's where my motto comes from, manifest, plan, and prepare. When it comes to manifestation, you have to reprogram your mind. Remove all negative thoughts, doubts, and fears, and replace it with hope, faith, and courage, and discipline within yourself. Start speaking words of beauty. Start cleaning out all those, those negative words that you're used to saying and replacing it with power, power excuse me, powerful words and positive words. And then once you move on to that, and you got that just about down pat, planning, that's when it comes to putting words to action to paper, if you will. When you speak it into existence, write it out on paper on what goals you want to achieve, uh, what plans you have to attack those goals, you know, having a backup plan, having an exit strategy. You can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it is coming. And whatever comes your way, you will get through it because you're a boss. And that's what bosses do. Now, as far as preparation side, that goes in tunes with cleaning your internal and your external house. When I say internal, that means getting your mental health in check, uh, um, uh, fixing your finances, anything intangible in your life that needs to be, you know, tuned up, get it in check. You know, your physical health, get it in check. Um, mending broken bridges, do that. Cutting people off who mean you know well or that's bringing you no good to your life, get them, get them up out of there quick, fast, in a hurry. And so whatever it is that you're manifesting and planning for when you are prepared for it or when it comes to you, you will be better prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. That was my one of my biggest downfalls in my 20s. I, I had a lot of good opportunities coming my way, but I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know what to do with it, so I squandered it. So when you manifest, plan, and prepare for the good that's coming to your life, you will know how to you know deal with it and how to maintain it. 
and so manifest plan and prepare that's my mantra you guys uh and for anybody else like i said that's you know living in that that the negative mindset remember whatever it is that you went through in your life that may or may not be your fault it's out of your control but at the same point in time this is your issue to deal with and if you're sitting there knowing that you have a problem that you don't want to fix it is your fault including that negative mindset so Dig deep within you and take that power and take that control back that others may have had over you and, and free yourself, yourself from that bondage, that mental bondage more importantly before any physical, uh, even with the spiritual as well, but free yourself mentally. That's that's one, one going to be one of the most main and prominent things that you would have to do when it comes to reprogramming your mind. Um, again, like I said, taste and see you guys. I'm an example and no at all and i have to be honest and real with myself even some of the things that i'm manifesting planning for they haven't came to me yet but it doesn't mean that it's not coming who's to say and so uh, i'm going to continue to manifest plan and prepare that's just what it is for me for instance i'm you know manifesting planning and preparing for it to being on the rolling martin unfiltered podcast it has not happened yet i keep emailing this man day in and day out um, finally getting some conversation going and so who knows I'm going to keep going until I reach my goal and to get on that show and get uh, the exposure that I need for the target audience that are you know equipped for my book and so manifest plan and prepare that's that's what I'm doing when it comes to uh, getting ready for the goodness that's coming into my life and I'm not allowing any type of negativity to take over my thoughts even though it may come into my mind I'm not going to give in to that. I'm going to be quiet and not speak that into existence. Yeah? And so for those out there that's feeling like me, of you know, thinking like how I'm thinking, even if you're not, get on the wall. <laughs> and so if you like what I'm talking about in regards to the subject of reprogramming your mind, you guys want to chime in and interact with me, definitely show me by liking, sharing, comment, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. As well as, you guys, don't forget, check out all my social media handles on my website, differenceworld.net my instagram my twitter my tiktok all that good junk uh check it out on my website as well as uh, anybody looking for motivational speakers interviews for their podcasting uh as well as grassroots conversations definitely hit me up go to my website again differenceworld.net and get your uh, excuse me and book your girl i'm free of charge as of now and speaking of getting your copies <laughs> don't forget to go uh, on my website as well uh, my book what if a controversial paradigm shift it is available again for you guys uh, it's again written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in america and i've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations so again please be advised that's intended for a mature audience and so if you can't take this type of heat get your fire blinking you'll be okay still come on to the kitchen <laughs> that's the point of it all to have these conversations that need to be had you guys it 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 um from in my opinion this is how we can push for you know systemic change instead of talking about systemic racism uh, all the time it's just having these conversations that that's going to you know put us together take accountability and acknowledgement and so again as well as with unity it's not just about pissing off white people or pissing or offending other people it's more so about unity so those they got common sense and can make it to the fourth paradigm hypothetical you see what it is that i'm, I'm the gist of the book overall and so again go to my website differencewall.net and get your copy of my book as soon as possible you guys yeah and moving right along with the gravy train what else we got going on in difference world tomorrow is tuesday so you know on tuesdays we do our social awareness content and so again be sure that's why you guys got to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button so when i drop the content you guys come on into different world and come and learn about what it is that i'm talking on today's to on that day's topic so um be sure to again hit that notification bell for you girl i don't understand why you haven't done so yet <laughs> uh what else we got you guys lastly but definitely most importantly our mental health check for those out there that may need it including myself any type of mental anguish illness stress anxieties whatever the case may be feeling you know depression suicidal dealing with bullying uh, having a relapse whatever the mental anguish may be for you please know that it is okay to not be okay but don't ever sit there and not be okay go get help go talk with somebody uh, pick up a hobby if you need to get on medication do whatever you have to do to keep your mental health in check and not going off the deep end as well as possibly taking anybody with you 
If you need or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you guys can text 988 or 741-741. And for those that would prefer, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S. that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys be sure to check out incounseling.com. In counseling again is spelled E N C O U N S E L I N G dot com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, it is on you to do your own homework and your own research to find what works best for you. At the end of the day, you are the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters. Nobody else but you. And remember, whatever that you are going through, whatever trial and tribulation, that may be for you at this time in your life, you will get through it and this too shall pass. So going off the deep end is not an option. It's not worth it. So don't do it. Okay. Uh, and moving on from uh, mental health check, you guys. Uh, again, if you like my topic today when it comes to reprogramming the mind uh, in regards to our motivational content, be sure by liking, sharing, comment, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I definitely appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming. And remember, you guys, whatever it is in life that you are feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Dip as well. Come and learn. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slaves trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If? A controversial paradigm shift by author different. Go to differenceworld.net.